When breeding betas, it is important to take the proper measures in order to have a greater chance in succession when breeding your fish. So in this video, I will show you the tips that might help you to have the mastery in breeding your betas. The first thing to consider when breeding betas is the proper conditioning. When breeding your betas, conditioning is very important. It involves the proper pairing of your betas and giving them the proper and right amount of foods. So, how to pair your female and male betas? Pairing your male and female betas is very easy. You just have to place their tongue next to each other and let them flare for a few minutes every day. 10 to 15 minutes of flaring your betas is already enough for them to be used to each other. You will notice that your male beta would flare vigorously towards your female beta. Sometimes, the male beta will create a bubble nest. This is an indication that your male beta is now ready to breed. Same thing goes to female betas. She will flare back and might have a chance to make some bubble nest. And then next is about the food. So, what are the best foods for betas while conditioning them for breeding? In my experience, I would recommend to give your breeder betas some live foods. Live foods contains enough energy and nutrients that your betas need for breeding. Also, giving your female beta the right kind of food helps them develop more eggs inside their belly. You can also give your betas high quality fish food especially those foods that are rich in protein. It's an effective alternate for live foods if it's not available in your area. So, let's now proceed to the other things that should be considered in actual breeding. So next on the list, which I consider as the most important factor in breeding your beta, is the water quality. Optimal water condition is an important thing in breeding betas. Clean and conditioned water helps your betas to breed faster. Clean and conditioned water saves you from failure in breeding. Because dirty water gives stress to your betas. Also, it might contaminate your eggs, leading to bacterial and fungal blooms. While your male breeder beta takes care of the eggs, it will eat the damage and dirty eggs. There might have a chance that the good ones will also be eaten. So if you have bad water quality, your male beta would likely eat all the eggs. So how to give your betas optimal water condition? In my experience, I'm always using Indian almond extract because I believe that it is very effective when breeding your betas. My mixture contains methylene blue, rock salt, and of course the main ingredient, the Indian almond leaves. Indian almond leaves has antibacterial properties that prevents infection on your betas wounds. These wounds are caused by aggression between two breeder betas. Methylene blue is for fungal protection. It prevents fungus development on eggs. Rock salt reduces the amount of water that your beta absorbs putting less pressure on its gills and kidneys. You can click and see the link above to know the process on how I make my Indian almond extract. The next thing that should be considered when breeding betta is a tank or breeding container and the amount of space. When selecting a breeding tank for your betas, it is important to select the proper tank that is appropriate to your betas size. Giant and long fin betas needs a larger breeding tank. Larger space is needed for them to be able to move freely inside the breeding container. This will also prevent stress to your breeders when spawning their eggs due to the abundance of space. You can use small space when breeding long fin betas but you also have to the risk that your betas might get stressed. Some long fin betas takes longer time to recover from breeding stress after breeding. So I would recommend to use large space when breeding betas regardless of what kind of tank it is 
as long as your berras can move freely inside the breeding container. For smaller berras, like half moon plackets, you can use small space. For they have smaller body and shorter fins compared to long finned and giant berras. Personally, when I breed half moon plackat berras, the amount of water inside the breeding container is just about a quarter of a gallon. Another thing that I can advise to you when breeding beta is to provide cover for your breeders. Beta needs privacy when breeding, so any disturbance around them that they would see and feel will give them stress. This will result to failure in breeding or your breeder betas might eat their eggs. So when selecting a breeding container for your betas, you have to also select the ones that would provide cover to your breeders. All of us wants to produce beautiful betas. The last thing that I can advise to you is to select a good quality breeders. So if you have good quality breeders to breed, you would likely have a chance to produce your own good quality betas. So I think that's all the things that you have to know about breeding betas. By the way, happy fish keeping to Sandy and Dexter Naong. Please like this video and comment down below about your thoughts on this video. Also, share this video and subscribe to my channel to get notified on my upcoming videos. That's all for today and see you again very soon.